children are abused in many ways. Children's Hospital successfully developed the SCAN program for identifying abused children as they enter the emergency room setting and for discovering and initiating treatment for the abuser. SCAN stands for Suspected Child Abuse and Neglect. Dr. John Reinhardt is the director of the Division of Behavioral Sciences at Children's Hospital. Well, the most important uh, thing in the emergency room is for nurses and physicians to uh, be alert to the possibility uh, of abuse as being the cause of the condition that the child is brought to the emergency room. A uh, child may be brought, uh, say a four-month-old infant is brought to the emergency room for uh, an upper respiratory infection, which doesn't seem very severe. But at the same time, on examination, the child has bruises about the buttocks or chest or especially face and head. Uh, this should alert the physician to inquire about uh, the care of the baby, to inquire about the frustrations of the parents, to inquire about the support system available to the family, to make sufficient inquiry to ascertain whether or not the bruises uh, are an underlying uh, cause for concern on the parent's part and that the upper respiratory infection is just uh, what we call a ticket of admission. Hi, can I help you? Um, my little girl, she had an accident somewhere she fell down the steps and um, she's been hurt and we're talking about her head hurting and she's been dizzy and I just thought I'd bring her in and see what's wrong. Okay. Did you see her fall? The nurse, as the first person to contact both child and parent, is in the front line of child abuse detection management. I was in the kitchen and she was going up, she was upstairs, you know, playing in her bedroom and she just fell on the steps. Yeah. Okay. Do you think she cried right away after she fell? Yeah, she was screaming when she fell. You want to take... In the following documented case history, the people you see are not actors and actresses. Now, when the nurse comes in, you be quiet, okay? Don't you be saying anything, you hear me? Don't say, don't tell her anything, you hear? How do you, mommy didn't mean it. Here, the ticket of admission is potentially serious. A blow to the head. You fell down the steps and you was playing by the steps and your dolly fell down and you went to get her and you fell, okay? Just, you know, don't let her know. Don't say mommy hit you, okay? Please don't. I, I'm not sure there is a typical child abuser. I think almost any person can abuse a child given enough provocation. People though, who have been poorly cared for themselves, who have difficulty in relating to others, people who are, tend to be isolated and without supports of their own, these are the people who are most prone to be under stress then, which then uh, precipitates uh, abusive incidents. Well, ideally, I think all of us uh, in emergency rooms ought to know know more about the people that come in there than we often do. It's a busy place, uh, people are rushed, uh, uh, but we need to know uh, more about the families and their histories of growing up. When you have a uh, parent who has had uh, poor care themselves, they may have been abused themselves, this makes one uh, more uh, suspicious that uh, they also could have been abusive. So uh, family histories uh, are very important. We have concerns about how uh, parents in the United States tend to uh, discipline very harshly. We're very mixed up, I believe, about uh, where discipline uh, moves into uh, uh, abuse. Hi. What's your name? Heidi. Hi, Heidi. Sweetheart, all I'm going to do in here is listen to your heart and take your temperature and your blood pressure and see how much you weigh, okay? Nothing that's going to hurt, all right? Oh, you got a little bruise there, huh? Did you put your head any place else back? Hmm? Anything else hurt? Hmm? Can you move your arm? It hurts back there, too. Can you move? Can you move your arms? Child abuse has a wide range. There is gross physical abuse when a parent in a fit of temper might throw a baby against a wall. There is physical neglect when a parent fails to provide properly for the child's physical needs of food, shelter, or medicine, or when the child is frequently abandoned. And, I mean, you don't have to be able to down the steps, but she does fall. Yeah. Did she fall on her back recently? 
Not that you know of? No. Okay. Now I'm going to take your temperature. I'm going to put it to my Sexual body. abuse is another form. It is gross abuse of a sexual nature when the child is used for the discharge of parents' frustrations. This may look a little different. Oh, thank you. This may look a little different than the one you're used to at home, all right? But it's a thermometer. A fourth type of child abuse is emotional neglect. This is difficult to identify and difficult to insist upon help. Dr. Holly Davis is the medical director of the Emergency Department of Children's Hospital. She talks about emotional abuse. In addition to these active forms of physical injury, there is physical neglect, which generally relates to both physical neglect in terms of poor vigilance, inadequate feeding, and attention and stimulation, and to some extent emotional neglect, which relates primarily to the stimulation and amount of attention that's paid to the child. In recent years, we've gotten so good at having a high index of suspicion, this has become an increasing problem. Uh, we are much more tuned in to subtle clues. And it's become increasingly important not to jump the gun and to gather enough data in order to be relatively sure of our suspicions and to have reasonably good documentation. It's quite an ordinary feeling in the emergency room to want to rescue the child from the parent. But child abuse is a family problem. Parents should be given every chance to care for their children. I like to think that the entire hospital is a team of people interested in uh, identifying these problems and trying to be helpful to uh, the adults who are caring for these children. We do have the problem of uh, parents' rights versus children's rights. Uh, children, I believe, have a right to a healthy life. Uh, parents' rights sometimes uh, have to be interfered with in order for a child to have a healthy life. The hospital's job is to identify the problem and report them to the duly authorized agency, which in Pennsylvania is the Children and Youth Services. If Children and Youth Services finds a situation which they are uncertain about, they may uh, uh, recommend that the child be removed from the care of the parents until parents can uh, receive help. Uh, this is where the breakdowns uh, come because we don't have enough uh, we don't have adequate services to help the many people that do need help. Regina, I have a new patient. The last name's Moore, M-O-O-R-E. Heidi. The pediatrician has an increasing role in the assessment and management of child abuse. About this little three-year-old that I just got through triaging. Her mom said that she fell down a flight of stairs and she's got a bruise on her head. The mom doesn't think she lost consciousness. But she's got some bruises on her back, too, that the mom really can't explain. The kid's alert and vital signs are fine, but I thought she'd like to know about that. If you need to bring Heidi to Children's Hospital again, if you'll bring this card and present her registration, it'll make things go a lot faster. If you hold on this slip of paper, they're probably going to need to take an x-ray of her today, and you're going to need that for that. If you just have a seat in the chairs, they'll call you as soon as possible. I'm Dr. Zubkoff. This must be Heidi. Yes. Clues for the emergency room assessment of child abuse can come from the physical exam, from history taking, and from lab studies. Well, what's the problem? Um, she fell down some steps this morning. The parent's story of how the accident occurred is a place to start, checking first to see if the story and the accident fit together. You got a little bruise over there. Okay. Well, how's she been behaving? In the physical exam, the pediatrician looks for injuries about the mouth and head, for unexplained bruises, and for linear marks, possibly caused by whipping with a cord or belt. It's important not to confuse the results of trauma with the results attributable to a medical reason, so histories of bleeding disorders are inquired about. Later, laboratory and blood studies can confirm if bruises are due to blood dyscrasia or to trauma. When did these occur? She has a tricycle, mm -hmm. and she just, she fell. 
she was peddling it and she ran over teddy bear it was on a rug mm -hmm. in the living room and she just fell against the coffee table did she fall sideways yeah she hit right into the coffee table like mm -hmm. it's sitting right in the middle of the room and she hit right into the corner of it the most important thing with regard to approaching these parents is to be understanding and non-judgmental and that is sometimes easier said than done oftentimes particularly in the first few encounters a physician or house officer or medical student has with an abusive family and an abused child generate an enormous amount of dismay and anger and it is very easy particularly in these first few encounters for one's emotions to get the better of one and so a fair amount of our teaching with regard to child abuse and with regard to techniques of management relates to dealing with one's own feelings and one of the things that seems to be most helpful is reminding them that most people who abuse their children are people who were abused children themselves people who have led not very pleasant lives and who have not been taught well in the skills of day in and day out living and particularly in, in the management of daily stresses that these people are often <clears throat> living under situations of chronic stress with a lot of acute stresses added in and that it's important to remember that their lives are not easy and that they are deserving of understanding and empathy. Okay. I just want to get the sequence of events just straight again in my mind. This morning she fell down. X-rays will determine if fractures are characteristic of trauma, such as twisting fractures or tearing fractures of the ends of the long bones. Whole body X-rays are done for infants. The radiologist can tell if the infant or child has old fractures due to previous trauma by the amount of calcium so laydown. Let's just, let's just say the coffee table. Was it a rectangular table? Yeah. Photographs of the injuries will also be taken. The child is retained if there are severe injuries, severe failure to thrive, questionable injuries, if more information is needed, or if the child is under two and cannot be properly placed under foster care. Fuzzy cases tend to be admitted for further evaluation. This gives the hospital time for testing, information gathering, and helps to avoid making an inappropriate child abuse report. When the parent cannot provide an adequate description of how the child received injuries, the pediatrician initiates a full assessment. In addition to a complete physical examination, x-rays are taken. In children under two, this involves a skeletal survey. In older children, x-rays are obtained based upon physical findings. After he discusses what is about to happen with the parent, then he may request that the parent speak with a social worker while test results are awaited. Always, the pediatrician should remain calm and non-judgmental. The uh, parents need as much care and attention as the uh, children do. We try not to uh, take a punitive uh, attitude about these matters, uh, which is very easy to do. And I think most people involved in these matters, uh, the initial feelings are uh, somebody ought to take these people and string them up by their heels. This is a terrible thing to do. Uh, we tend to forget that given enough stress, it's likely that any, any adult could be abusive at some time. Well, I guess there are always concerns, Mrs. Smith. The social worker representing the hospital's behavioral science division aids the pediatrician by collecting further family data. Um, I guess maybe it's kind of worrisome maybe that she has the bruises that she has, and it's it's really kind of hard to to put the two things together. And um, it sounds like you know maybe with the kind of stress that you're under. Maybe there are some other things that are pressing on you that we really haven't talked about yet. Are you married now? No. Well, we're separated. We're married, but we're separated. I see. What is your husband's name? Andrew. Do you have other children besides Heidi? No. Okay. Where is your husband now? You said they're separated. Their interviews can take place while the results of lab studies are being awaited and can provide the parent with support and empathy. 
I really don't know. You know, I know he works at Jane Austen World. That's where he works. We're separated. I see. But I really don't know where he's at now. Mm -hmm. So he's really not available then to, to give you any support or any help at all? No. No. He wasn't there through Heidi, so, you know. Okay. What makes what, what make him be there now? I noticed that you, you look like you're a little bit pregnant. You know, very uh, much pregnant. Like two months, two and a half more months. In this longer, more detailed interview, another angle on the injury and on the parent can be obtained, which helps the final diagnosis. The parent's personal history also provides clues. But, you know, what do you expect when you're pregnant? Sure. I mean, I just, I don't know if I'm pregnant, but I am just really tired. Mm -hmm. you know, just Tired, you know. mm -hmm. Sometimes I would like to lay down or have a weekend to myself or just a day to myself and there's nobody, you know, for me to ask to take her, you know, for at least for an hour. So you spend all your time being a mother? There's not much yeah. left for you, is there? No. There is a lot of stress, you know, like I am tired. Sure. And I do have to run after her and I really Most don't. parents don't admit they abuse their children. Those who do are exhibiting greater emotional health than those who don't. For the most part, abusers often feel quite badly about what they've done. It is important to elicit their trust, to show that the hospital's goal is not to remove children or to put people in jail, but to offer help to the family. Doing a lot of things to, to take care of herself, but it sounds like there isn't anybody taking care of you either. Being judgmental or emotional does not help. They usually have good reason to mistrust authority figures. Their own parents were often unreliable and unpredictable. Concerns that I would like to share with Dr. Zukov. So what I want to do is go out and talk with him, and then we'll come back and talk with you together and, and share with you what our concerns are and, and maybe make some suggestions to you. Is it like I can't take care of my baby? I'm not suggesting that at all, but you know, it sounds like you know, you're under a lot of stress. Sounds like she's a very demanding child, really active. And you know, it's, it's not to say that you can't take care of her, but to let you know that there are services available to help you to do the job that you want to do. Um, these x-rays of the skull and the ribs show no fractures. Mm -hmm. So even though she has bruises, um, there are no fractures at least. Okay. Um, let me just share with you a few things that, that I got from Mrs. Moore in talking with her. Um, she tells me the same thing that, that she's told you and everybody else that she's talked to. I guess some of the things that concern me are the history that she gave. And This is a mom who's isolated and really doesn't have any supports or anybody to turn to. In addition to that, she was an abused child. And I mm. thought maybe you should know about that before we went back to talk with okay. her. There are some other things I can share with you later. Okay, fine. It's not an easy thing to tell a parent that you feel that the child has suffered an injury. We're not interested in who did it. We're interested in the fact that the child had an injury, it was suffered while in the care of the parents, and what can we do to be of help to them? Well, we just have a couple of problems to discuss. First of all, she has that bruise on her head and she fell down the stairs. And it is important to be honest with the parent. If the situation suggests child abuse, the parent must be told that the law requires this possibility to be reported and that the hospital will act to ensure the protection of the child until the abuser is identified and until there is assurance that the injuries will cease. We're just having some difficulty explaining those from the It is important to assure parents that the hospital wants to offer care for them and their child. The hospital's job is not to place blame or to accuse people of wrongdoing, but to provide the child with protection and the parent with relief from the stress of parenting. We do believe that honesty is the best policy. I think that, uh, in my experience, I think people really are, at some level, relieved to know that uh, uh, we do feel that they've been involved in the uh, child's injuries. We're not attempting to um, take children away from them. We're not attempting to put the parents in jail. Our attitude is uh, this is something that happened. It needs, it's a family that needs help, and how do we get started? Do you know how active a two-year-old two kid is? I mean Severe injuries are always hospitalized, 
If injuries are less severe, children and youth services might be contacted to place the child into protective custody. Or if there is no fear of future injury, child welfare will be asked to investigate. I mean, I might hit her once in a while, you know, but I don't go a lot, you know, I don't go killing her. When the assessment and lab studies are returned and it becomes evident that there is an inconsistent history of injury, then the pediatrician must explain to the parent that he is concerned that someone is injuring the child and that he must report this condition to the proper authorities. His concern should be expressed in a non-accusatory way. I mean, I hit her. I'll admit I hit her. You know, I don't know how I hit her, but I hit her. I mean, she does get on my nerves. Most parents find this outpouring of help a welcome relief. Short amount of relief each day. But where am I going to get the relief from? I mean, I have nobody. I have no father. I have no, no nothing, you know. So what am I supposed to do? You know, just let my next door never take care of my kid. Or would you please watch her because well, she's getting on my nerves? We might be able to help you with that. There are a number of things that, that we wanted to suggest to you, um, Mrs. Moore, but one of the things that, that I wanted to pursue a little bit, you said that there are times when you do hit her. Do you ever remember maybe hitting her hard enough to leave marks on her body? I don't know. When I hit, I just, I hit. You, know. you just kind of lose control at times? I guess you could say that, you know. I mean... I guess when I start hitting you, you just you just hit. You don't know what you're doing. Sure. Well, you know, from some of the things that that you shared with me and you're sharing with Dr. Zubkoff now, it sounds like you're under a lot of stress and that you have been for a long time. And and just as we're worried about Heidi, we're worried about you too because it can't leave you with a very good feeling when you know you feel like you're losing control with your little girl. Um, you're asking for help in so many ways, and we think your coming here was just another call for help. Um, so we'd like to, to set up a plan where you can get some help and some relief, and hopefully something like this won't occur again. How does that sound to you? I'm not saying I have a problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, I admit I hit Heidi. You know? mm -hmm. Maybe sometimes I do lose my temper. Maybe sometimes I do lose my cold. But it's hard. You know, you know it's hard being a single parent, period. Sure you know? I mean, do you know what it's like when you're, when you're tired and you're worn out and your kid does get on your nerves? Do you know what, you just, do you know what it's like? Well, I mean, go ahead and let it out. what am I supposed to do? You know what I mean? Who do you, you don't tell your neighbors, you don't, you don't tell nobody who you're supposed to tell. I don't want to do anything to her, but it's, it just, you know, sometimes she, she just gets really to my nerves, you know, and I can't take it. You know, I mean, sometimes it's really, I mean, um, it's just me. Um, it's me. All, everything, all the problems, financial, you know, just everything is all me, you know. So sometimes I do lose my temper. Sometimes I do hit her extra hard or I do hit her. And I did hit her on, she didn't fall off the bike. I hit her. I threw her because she was getting on my nerves. I, I didn't have no money to buy her no food, you know. <laughs> I couldn't get no money, and so what are you supposed to do? Well, I mean, people want to do it, they hurt the kids worse than that, you know? And I mean, not that I wanted to do it, but I didn't have nobody to talk to. Are you afraid you're going to hurt her again? When you're hitting again, and when you pick them up and you throw them, or just when you're yelling at them, and, and you don't like them, you hate them, what are you supposed to feel like you're afraid of? I mean, yeah, I'm afraid. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't even want to come in here, I was afraid, you know? I, the feelings, yeah, that's what hurts. I don't want to be doing it to my little girl. The moment a parent brings a child to the emergency room, a scan program is everyone's responsibility, from identifying child abuse to initiating treatment for the abuser.